and welcome to Mrs Catnell's Maths Lesson 4 of this week. Uh, we have been looking at, um, I've really forgotten, we've been looking at positional language back at, on the first day and now we've been looking at 3D shapes and all the properties of 3D shapes and their names uh, over the last couple of days. So uh, this lesson is going to stick with 3D shapes and we're going to do a bit of shape sorting using Venn diagrams um, but it helps us to really look at uh, properties of a 3D shape before we sort them out. So it's a really good way of really studying and zoning in on our 3D shapes. Before we do that though, I would like to have a go at doing some counting. So I think that if I move Ted Ted to the side here, we're going to count in ones to 80, to the number 80. We're going to go high on the fives, low on the multiples of 10, so the ones that end in a zero. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. 35, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, nearly finished, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Let's just count backwards from 20. Remember counting backwards helps us with subtraction. We're going to go, start from 20 and go to the smaller numbers each time until we reach what would be here, which is zero. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, zero. Fantastic counting backwards, wasn't it, Ted Ted? Yes, indeedy. Right, we are going to look at doing the days of, um, so not the days of the week, the months of the year song. So I'm just going to whiz this round and we should have my months of the year in place. Here we are, sorry, Ted Ted. And let's just poke that through my handy branch that's been supporting this board all this time. Let's tuck those behind. Okay, so we have our months of the year. Hopefully they're all on the camera there. How many months in the year? 12 months in the year. And remember, when a whole year's gone through, you just start all over again. So we have, let's do it to our usual tune. January, February, March and April, May, June, July and August, September, October, November, December, these are the months of the year. And one of my special friends from my class is, has been an absolute star at the months of the year song and the days of the week. So thumbs up to you. You know who you are, you're absolutely brilliant. So these are our 12 months of the year. If the month was July, then my next month would be August. If my month was October, then I know that the next month would be November, okay? So if you've got one of these at home still, then have a few questions like that to help you go through your months of the year. Right, on your boards now, or on your paper, we are going to just revisit writing the number that is one more than a number, or one less than a number, okay? We haven't done that for a little while. So I'm going to call a number out, and then I want you to write the number that's one more. So for this reason, I'm going to just turn this around once more so that you can see my hundred square if it would help you as well, if you haven't got your own one in front of you. 
sometimes it's tricky to remember what numbers are one more and one less okay so first of all we are going to do the numbers that are one more than a number I'm going to call a number out I want you to write on your board not the number I've said but the number that is one more the number that comes after the number I have said so I'm going to call out to you the number seven first of all can you write on your board the next number the number that's one more than seven you should be writing on your boards the number eight so if you've done that give yourself a pat on the back okay sticking with one more can you write the number that is one more than the number 17 one more than 17 what's the next number one more than 17 17 add one more you should have had a little clue from your seven before it might have helped you out with knowing what to write what's one more than 17 it is 18 is one more than 17. Sticking with one more then, can you write the number that is one more than 24? The number that's one more than 24. Write it on your boards. Flash it to the camera now. Pause the video if you need time to think. But one more than 24 is 25. Excellent work. And I'm going to throw in a real stretchy one for some of you. Can you write the number that's one more than 86? One more than 86. Remember, 86 has eight lots of 10 in the first column and six units is 86. I want to know what number is one more than 86. This is a real stretchy one for you. We're really creeping up into the hundreds here. It'll be 87. Fantastic if you got that right. Now we're going to look at writing on your board the number that's one less. So remember, say to yourself, one less now. Not one more anymore, one less. So you're looking at the number that came before it. Going backwards, counting backwards one. Okay? Can you write on your board the number that is one less than 16? One less than 16. Going backwards this time for one less into the smaller numbers. Not one more, but one less. One less than 16, 15. Hopefully you got that on your board. Well done if you did. Okay, sticking with one less. One less than 12. One less than 12. What's the number that comes before 12? One less than 12. Pause the video if you need extra time. It is 11. Okay, let's do one more of our one less. One less now, a bit bigger number, one less than 38. One less than 38. What would one less than 38 be? It would be 37. It's going into the much bigger numbers there. But if you want to carry that on after the video, then and you're happy with numbers from 0 to 20, then that is excellent. So get your adult to ask you some one more then and one less than questions from numbers 0 to 20. Sometimes it's good to throw in a couple of two more, so counting on two more numbers is a very good test as well. Okay, so we are going to look at now a little bit of sorting, okay? So we're going to be sorting our 3D shapes that we've been looking at for uh, the rest of these lessons this week. So I have them in my carrier bag here, and uh, we can remember some of these. Do you remember what the name of this shape is? With circular shaped faces on each end and one curved one. Shout it out to the screen, it's like a tin of beans. It's a cylinder, it's our cylinder. Um, we've also got in my bag here, they're all the same shaped square face. So this 3D shape is called a cube. Well done if you got that right. We've also got ah, some rectangular shaped faces going round the, out, the middle part and square shaped faces on each end. But remember, they could be rectangular shaped, rectangle shaped faces on each end as well, and still be a, it's like a stretched out cube, a cuboid, cuboid. This one, we always remember this one with a point on one end, curved face, and then a circular shaped face on this end. It's a, a cone. And what is this one here that comes up to a point with triangular shaped faces around the outside, but a square shaped face on its base. It's a square based P 
pyramid. That's quite a tricky one, so don't worry if you couldn't remember that one so well. Um, oh, this one here. One continuous curved face. This is a sphere. A sphere. And that's going to roll about, as we know, so I'm going to keep that in my bag. And oh, this one here. Triangular shaped face is going up to a point again. But underneath another triangle for its base so it is a triangular based pyramid okay. and we have got here ah, this one which was a bit like our chocolate box that we found on day one triangles shaped faces on each end as you can see but then going round the middle rectangular shaped faces like this this one is a triangular prism with an mmm on the end remember triangular prism and that was like my chocolate Toblerone box and then this one is like a sphere but cut in half remember our word for half was semi so this is simply a semi sphere notice that a semi sphere has that continuous curved face but then also a circular shaped face because it's been cut in half and we've also got this one, which we've mentioned a couple of times this week. It has five, one, two, three, four, five sided shape on this side and a five sided shape on the other end. Okay, five sided shapes are called pentagons. It has rectangular shaped faces going all the way around the edge. This is a pentagonal prism. Pentagonal prism tricky one that so we don't use that one too often but I like to throw in a few extra ones to really test you okay now I'm going to bring the camera over now so it's going to go a little bit shaky so bear with so I'm bringing the camera over because over on the table here I have a Venn diagram I'm going to come out a little bit it's a Venn diagram okay now this is where and you've possibly done this in your classrooms before my class have done this I believe with two dimensional shapes flat shapes we have one hoop here okay and another hoop here and you'll notice they're not quite just next to each other but they're overlapping so there's a space in between this bit here where the two hoops are overlapping, okay? At the top, I've put a title of 3D Shape Sorting, if Teddy moves his little feet there, there we go. 3D Shape Sorting is what we're doing here with our Venn diagram, this is our Venn diagram. Now, before we go any further, we can't sort these shapes yet because we need to um, give a name to each hoop, okay? In order to be able to sort things, each hoop needs a name. So I'm going to take my pen here and we're going to name what each of these hoops are for sorting. Now we want to sort our 3D shapes in and we want to do it to do with faces, okay? So we're not talking about the edges here, the, the straight edges going across the top and around the bits here. And we're not talking about where they meet here, where all the edges meet or anything. We're just talking about the faces, this this particular week okay so these are this the flat sort of shape faces here that you can see looking at you so we're going to sort with our Venn diagram and I think looking at our 3d shapes and thinking about all the different shaped faces that we can see on them then I'm going to probably say that I'm going to label this hoop uh, this one is for square shaped faces so square shaped faces okay so any 3d shape that has a square shaped face will go in this hoop okay this hoop i'm going to label hmm i'm going to label that triangular shaped faces i think because we've got quite a lot of 3d shapes that have triangular shaped faces triangular shaped faces now we're going to be doing this sorting here together um today we're going to do it together but it doesn't mean i don't want you i want you to just stop there after this video by all means draw your own venn diagrams okay with your two hoops where they're overlapping and decide how you're going to do your sorting of your 3d shapes if you've still got your um play-doh ones from yesterday's lesson then you could use those to do your sorting so very handy to have them in front of you so you can really look at the faces and not just do it from memory okay so how our venn diagram works if you've never used one before is every 3d shape that has a square 
pear-shaped face must go in this hoop okay but not in this bit here where they overlap okay I'm going to talk to you about that in a second if they have a triangular shaped face they go in this part of the hoop but not in this middle bit here the ones to go in the middle bit and you might know this so you might be calling it out to the screen already which ones would go in the overlapping middle space they are the ones that have both square shaped faces and triangular shaped faces so they have both so if they have both they need to be in this circle and in this circle and the space that shows being in both circles would be where they overlap here so they would have to go in the middle bit here now if a 3d shape doesn't have square shaped faces or triangular shaped faces where should we put those do you think we should put those around the outside here okay any space around the outside because they're not fitting in any of our sorting hoops okay they don't fit any of our criteria that we are sorting with okay so let's start first of all with let's put these down here so we don't get confused that we've already sorted them let's start with our cube that cube has the same shaped faces all the way around in fact six of them all the way around and they are what shape they are square shaped where every um, side is exactly the same length okay so it's a square so where will we put our cube it just has square shaped faces so you yell out or point to the screen where we would put our cube our cube would go in our square shaped faces bit but not in both because it doesn't have any triangular shaped faces. So just in this side of our hoop, sorting hoop. Okay, let's try our, what was this called again? Squares on the end and rectangular faces in the middle. Could sometimes have rectangular faces on the end. A cuboid. So we know it has square shaped faces and it has rectangular shaped faces. Does it have any triangular shaped faces? If you've got your Play-Doh one there, have a good look over your cuboid. No, it doesn't. So I can put that into our square-shaped faces one there. Look at that. Now, it's worth making a point here that if I'd had my everyday item that was a cuboid back from my lesson one, this is also a cuboid, but it only has, look, rectangular-shaped faces on each end and all the way around so this is still a cuboid but it doesn't have the square shaped faces on the end okay so they could be square they could be rectangular on the end where would this one go where would this cuboid go does it have square shaped faces no does it have triangular shaped faces no so it would go around the outside it doesn't fit any of our sorting criteria in our hoops so that cuboid so we can have cuboids either on the outside or inside hoop number one Okay, we now have a pyramid here. What shaped are these faces all around the edge here? They are triangle shaped, triangular. Oh, what about the base? This is a square base pyramid, so our base is a square shape. So yes, it has square shaped faces. Yes, it has triangular shaped faces. So where would we put our, tri uh, our square base pyramid? Call out to the screen we would put it in the middle where both sorting hoops overlap because it has a bit of both of our sorting criteria okay what about now our um do you remember what this is called triangles at each end for our faces and rectangles going around the middle okay this is our triangular based pyramid and where does it go it has triangular shaped faces and rectangular shaped faces it would just go over here, wouldn't it? Our first one in this sorting hoop because it just has triangular shaped faces there. It has rectangles as well, but we can't do a bit where we overlap it like this because it does, you know, it has rectangular, not square, and it has triangular. We just put it in there because it definitely has triangular shaped faces. Okay, let's go with our, whoops, nearly dropped it. What shape was this again? Looks like a tin of beans, circular shaped faces on each end and one continuous curved face in the middle. This is our cylinder. Does it have square shaped faces? No. Does it have triangular shaped faces? No. So where do we put our cylinder? Around the outside. It has none of our sorting criteria. Okay, we're nearly getting through these now. What is this one? Goes to a point. Has a circle shaped face here and one curved face around the middle to go to a point. This is a 
cone. Does it have a square shaped face? No. Does it have a triangular shaped face? No, I mean it looks like a triangle there but it's not because it's curved. Okay, it's a complete curved one. It's not triangular. It's not flat. Although well, it might look a bit flat on the screen. If you have one in your hand you can recognise that it's not flat. Okay, it's curved all the way round. So that doesn't have triangular shaped or square so it will go around the outside as well with our cylinder. Okay, we have our pentagonal prism pentagons on each end, five-sided shapes, pentagons, and rectangles going around the middle. Does it have square? Does it have triangular? Where does it go? Around the outside. Fantastic if you called out to the screen. I think we're almost done. I have another pyramid. You can see the triangular shaped faces all around the outside and then whoop on the bottom it's another triangle different shaped triangle to the ones around the faces around the, the sides but it is a triangle so where does our, tri our triangular based pyramid go does it have square shaped faces no does it have triangle shaped faces yes in fact it only does so that needs to go in our triangle shaped faces part of the hoop our last our final 3d shape that we have here today Oh no, I've got another one in the bag, haven't I? I've just remembered. So, we have a sphere cut in half. What is our word for half? Semi. So it is a semi-sphere. What shape is that face? A circle. And then it has a curved face on top. Okay, it's not a flat face at all. So does it have a square-shaped face? No. Does it have a triangle-shaped face? No. So where should it go? around the outside fantastic if you got that right i've just remembered what i put in here to stop rolling around oh look it's like a ball continuous curved all over face it is a sphere where does our sphere go does it have a square shaped face no it doesn't have any flat faces therefore it doesn't have a triangle shaped face so where does our sphere go it goes around the outside i'm going to put it in teddy's lap there otherwise it's going to roll all over my table so there is our venn diagram quite fairly spread out there isn't it we've got lots of shapes that didn't fit any of our sorting criteria and they're around the edge we've got some that just go in square shaped a cuboid and a cube we've got some that just had triangle shaped faces and not squares and that was a triangle based pyramid and a um, triangular prism and then we've got some that just didn't have any of the sorting criteria at all. So that is our Venn diagram. And you have helped me sort our 3D shapes to do with square shaped faces and triangular shaped faces. But like I say, after this lesson, because we did this one together, it would be very handy if you could have a go at choosing your own titles for your sorting criteria for your Venn diagram hoops. You don't have to have the same as mine. You could look at your shapes and have a good think what else could I use as my sorting criteria and then I want you to have a go at doing your own sorting if you're in my class put it onto tapestry so I can see your good work and if you're not then show it to an adult and check that you've done all your sorting for your 3d shapes correctly so have a really good look at those faces and think about what 2d shapes you can see um, and this is our last maths lesson um, that uh, that we have for this week and next week is half term so I won't be posting any new videos and as we are expected to go back to school um, from the 2nd of June then um, it's possible I won't be posting any more videos because I need to go in and uh, and teach my class um, so but keep checking online in case I post some more videos for those of you that are staying at home and keeping safe uh, but, uh, but this may well be our last math. So if so, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and thank you so much for your company all this time. And um, I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.